This is Peter York. And this is Michael Pierce. And, and you're, you're watching, watching Seattle Wireless, Wireless TV. TV. Hi, welcome to Seattle Wireless TV. In this month's show, we got a chance to talk to the guys from Personal Telco down in Portland. Also, we had a chance to interview Rob Flickinger, the inventor of the Pringles Cantana. Ristos, our correspondent in Germany, shows us some extreme wireless applications. And finally, we review the WatchGuard Soho 6 telecommuter. The Personal Telco project is based out of Portland, Oregon. About four years ago, the founders envisioned being connected to the internet anywhere. Starting small, they unwired their houses and provided access to anything within range of the wireless signal. Now, in 2003, Personal Telco has become a non-profit organization providing access everywhere. With over 100 free internet hotspots and growing, Personal Telco has created a free internet cloud engulfing Portland. Whether you're enjoying a coffee in Pioneer Square or watching a ball game in PGE Park, you can instantly surf the web thanks to the Personal Telco project. For more information on this project, feel free to check out their website at personaltelco.net. So we're here with Rob Flickinger. Uh, he's the author of uh, three books uh, from O'Reilly. Uh, one is called uh, Linux Server Hacks, uh, Building Community Wireless Networks, and uh, Wireless Hacks, brand new book. When, uh, that comes out when? Yeah, that comes out in September. Oh, right on. Um, it's just getting printed now. Okay. So, so Rob, um, you got three books out. You were one of the one of the people who actually started the Pringles uh, can antenna. Yeah. Um, you know, you're um, you're the author uh, or co-author of No Cat. Mm -hmm. um, tell us a little bit about the Pringles can. So, what, what was the deal with that? <laughs> the, the, the Pringles can was July 2001. So it's going on a couple of years old now. Um, where I lived in Sebastopol, I just happened to be able to see the uh, the O'Reilly headquarters, uh, six tenths of a mile line of sight, perfectly clean line of sight from my front door. So, uh, you know, just with where I lived, it turned into a really good place to start experimenting with antenna designs. So we wanted to see, you know, just how cheap we could make an antenna. And, uh, you know, there's just something really empowering about being able to take a piece of garbage and, you know, point it at an 802.11 antenna and have it work. Um, you know, the, the Pringles can, like I say, that was a couple years ago, we were, you know, very new at it. Uh, as it turns out, there are much better designs, uh, you know, much simpler and higher gain. Um, you know, it, it's really just a matter of getting the right size and shape of can and pointing it in the right direction. And, and that's really all there is to it. So, you know, a coffee can, a soup can, you know, a lot of those are, are easier to make and actually perform a lot better than the Pringles can. Got it. But I'm amazed at how much traction it's gotten. I mean, it's it's been printed up in, uh, there's, a, there's a Mexican, uh, 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 it was called um, We Interessante magazine. You know, this really trashy magazine. They, they just sent me one, and there's the Pringles can. In it. Right on. Yeah, it's, it's been everywhere. So, uh, we're going to talk to you a little today, today about uh, NoCat. What, what is the NoCat application that you co developed? NoCat no really means two things. Um, uh, there's the NoCat Auth project, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a captive portal that we developed. It's an open source captive portal. Uh, it's very much like if you've ever used a, a hotel network, um, any kind of commercial network where you plug in and before you can get access to the network it says, oh, I need your credit card, you know, please enter your credentials here. You know, you enter it and then suddenly you can get access to the rest of the network. Right, like that's, similar, similar to like the airport or, um, uh, or hotels. Right, or, yeah, if you're at a hotel or, or, a or at the airport, Starbucks is yeah. a perfect example yeah, of it. Uh, so, so our implementation is, is open source. Um, we have uh, two projects going. There's uh, the original NoCat auth was uh, written in Perl. Um, it's very extensible. We've, we've done a lot of work on that. It'll talk to Radius backend. It'll talk to MySQL backend. It, basically, any, anything you want to throw at it uh, to get the user's credentials, uh, it'll talk to. Um, and then the, the new version is uh, NoCat Splash. Uh, Skyler's actively working on That's the C port. It's a lot smaller. Uh, right now, it's just a, uh, it just gives you a splash screen, but it's, it's ideal for sticking on embedded devices. Um, you know, it'll work with a lot fewer resources than breaking your NoCat off. The, uh, the other meaning of NoCat is uh, the, the NoCat project, the, uh, the network that we built in um, uh, Sebastopol they're still working on. Uh, it, it's a pretty big community network down there. They've got about 18 nodes online um, uh, serving families uh, sort of north and west of um, Sebastopol. Uh, it's very rural California. Um, they have no hope of getting DSL or cable modem or any other kind of broadband access. So 
they have a relay network. Um, I mean, I think I think the longest hop. I think there's a there's a six point wireless to wireless hop through that network to get back to uh, six meg DSL. Uh, so that's that's the other NoCat. So tell me a little bit about uh, the applications of the technology, both NoCat off and NoCat splash. Well, the, I mean, the the basic technology is that it's a captive portal. So uh, especially in the case of NoCat splash, the first and primary thing that it does is it gives you a chance to identify your network to the people who are using it. So, you know, say you have, you know, a regular, you know, you get a D-Link AP, you, you open it up and you say, I'm going to share my, you know, my local access out. People who use that have no idea whether it's all right that, you know, that they're using that or, or who it is that's providing the service. A splash page forces people to, to at least give you some recognition. They get a page that says, hi there, this is my network, here are my terms of service, you know, please be gentle, you know, or, what, or whatever you want to put the restrictions on uh, for their network. Uh, it, it also gives you uh, firewalling options, so you can, for example, prevent the you know the dreaded mythical uh, drive-by spamming. Uh, it's very simple. You block port 25. People can't send mail without authenticating. Um, the NoCat Auth is actually a lot more uh, uh, complex than that. You, you can set up all kinds of rules. You can uh, make it so that people uh, who are the general public have different levels of access than people who are in your local community group, and they have different levels of access than you do because you own the equipment. So, you know, you can do uh, bandwidth throttling, you can filter different ports, um, you know, basically any kind of IP tables rules you can come up with, you can, you can let uh, NoCat manage for you. So it gives you granular access, rather than an all or nothing kind of thing, um, either locking everybody out or giving everybody unrestricted access, NoCat Auth gives you control. Got it. And then, so what do you see as, as sort of the future of some of these, these particular portal applications? I mean, do you see things like you know, using things like RSS or other kinds of content syndication protocols, or I mean, do you, what do you what do you see kind of as the as the future of, of some of this technology? Well, what, one one thing that I'm doing with uh, with my captive portal, uh, I advertise local content that's free to redistribute. Uh, that's a lot faster to get at than the internet. Uh, you know, it's funny the the, the the classic idea of the hotspot is I want to be able to let other people get access to the internet. And the internet's great, but there's other cool stuff you can do too. Uh, the you know the, the connection of your wireless is you know it's orders of magnitude faster than anybody's internet connection. So anything that you have that's available locally, people can get at very quickly. So you know it, you know take uh, Seattle Wireless for example. You know we're building this network that are you know collections of point-to-point -point nodes that are all connected at at least 11 megabits to each other. So theoretically, uh, you know like you're producing this TV show. Uh, you know there, there are people who uh, offer music, you know books, movies. Uh, you know archive.org has incredible stuff. Um, yeah, you can get at that from the internet, but that's going to cost people money because you have to connect through commercial networks to get at it. It's also going to be very slow because you're limited by your DSL or your cable connection or whatever it is that you have. If you have a local cache of that, you can get access to that at 11 megabits. Well, that's pretty neat. The only way to let people know about that is to advertise it. So a captive portal is a good way to do that. On the splash page, when people first start using your network, they can say, oh, I have this local network available. I have this content available on my local network. Uh, you know, if you're interested in Seattle Wireless or these projects, you know, please go over here. Otherwise, you can go ahead and go use the internet. So it's, it's really a good method for giving people more information about the network they're using. Uh, you know, the hotspots, uh, it's funny, uh, you know, there are a lot of businesses that are getting into the, you know, that have been getting into the, the hotspot business and are trying to sell, you know, per minute uh, access to the internet. Um, I have a hard time believing that they're going to keep up. Uh, you know, as it is, you know, like in Seattle Wireless and even NoCat, you know, we can't keep up with the number of people who are bringing open APs online. It's incredible. You know, you walk down any street and, you know, you, 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 can, take a, you can take a poll and see how many APs are available. Go down there the next week and I guarantee you there are going to be half again as many. Uh, you know, just in the time that I've lived here in, uh, in Seattle, you know, I've lived here six months. When I first moved into my apartment, there was nothing. The only thing that was available was about a, a T-Mobile about half a mile down the road. There was another one I could faintly see if I used a really high-gain antenna. Now, six months later, there are four networks, not counting my own, uh, that are all open and, you know, free to access. You know, people are building this whether we want them to or not. You know, you, wherever you go, there's going to be free access. My goal is to try to get people to act in concert to connect these networks together to you know to make something uh, something more usable than you know just a little hotspot here and a hotspot there that are potentially interfering with each other if we orchestrate this rollout we can build an incredible network so that, that's that's really where i think it's going you know, people are going to own this network that's great well thank you very much mm -hmm. for more information feel free to check out the website nocat.net and don't forget to pick up a copy of rob flickinger's latest book wireless hacks which will be out in september Hello, 
my name is Rista Koeva and I currently live in Germany in Europe due to my current robotic studies. I have been driving radio controlled cars, flying planes and helicopters for 15 years now. Although flying models is a nice hobby, I have always wanted to sit up there myself and view the world from above. With private airplanes this is no problem, but sadly Cessna is not acceptable for my wallet. Fortunately the surveillance and amateur video systems have drastically dropped in price in the last decade, so that these technologies have become available to everybody thanks to low prices. My Logo 20 model is powered with a 1 kW brushless electric motor, spinning 1.3 meter rotor at 1600 rpm. The model helicopter weighs almost 4 kg, that is around 9 pounds, and is powered by 20 sunny and nickel cadmium cells, which also make up almost one third of the weight. It's capable of lifting another 4 kg as payload, which makes it ideal for aerial filming. Thanks to its stability and huge power, Logo 20 is very popular among 3D pilots here in Europe. To record the videos, I'm using now a computer with hardware MPEG-2 coder card. This makes it easy to burn the videos to DVD or publish them in internet. You could see some samples also on my web page. In an industry fair in Germany a couple of years ago, I saw a small GPS module designed to be used in a personal vehicle in conjunction with a laptop for navigation. As the price was affordable, I got one. Just for fun I mounted it at the tail boom of my Logo helicopter and purchased a simple on-screen display interface that allows me to overlay the GPS position and some additional data like time and date on the live video feed. As for improvements there are many waiting to be tested. A great number of telemetry sensors like the parametric height sensor, transducer motor current sensor, pitot tube for airspeed, six component accelerometer to name a few. A dream is to build an autonomously flying helicopter, although this is very likely not to happen in the near future. Not that this would be impossible, in contrary, there are a number of university groups who have already succeeded more or less in this area. Just to make this all alone uh, takes time. Thank you and goodbye. This month's product review is on the WatchGuard Soho 6 Telecommuter. The thing that makes this device unique compared to other wireless access points is its advanced security features. Wireless security has become a big concern. The average access points are just plug and play. In most cases, this leaves your network open to intruders. This is unacceptable for an office environment where sensitive data is being transmitted. That's where the WatchGuard Soho 6 comes into play. Out of the box, it's ready to protect your wire network, but if you want wireless, you'll have to take the time to configure and enable it. At this point, you can set up security features such as 128-bit web encryption, MAC filtering, and VPN. With its 150 MHz processor, content and antivirus filtering is not a problem for the Soho 6. Updated by WatchGuard's live security service, the Soho 6 is always ready to defend and fight off the latest worms and viruses yeah. circulating on the internet. For more information on the WatchGuard Soho 6, feel free to check out our website at tv.seattlewireless.net or WatchGuard's website at watchguard.com. Well, that's this month's show. Uh, be sure to let us know what you think. Uh, and if you're a hardware vendor or you want to sponsor the show, drop us an email. Thanks. See you later. Okay, Mike, roll the credits. All right, be here.